Hello, we are back. Um, it's not quite our turn yet, but I thought I would go over a few pieces of information and just kind of update you on what's been going on um, since last we spoke, because it is almost our turn, and this is our block of time to to, to do this filming and whatnot, so we thought, uh, you know, we can at least talk about these things, even though we're still waiting. It's just about our turn. Um, so first first thing is, last time I, I know a lot of you were worried about Giraffe. She was missing. I didn't take the time to look partially because my time to film is finite. Um, and partially because I thought it was kind of interesting that she um, she went missing and wondering why it was. Turns out she was in this stack and she wasn't on either end of the stack. She was in the middle of the stack. This stack is the, the cultures that are waiting to cycle back around. So Little Red through Cowboy here. Um, she was just after, I think just between Little Red and Pegasus in the stack. So how I interpret that is maybe she was, she was sort of looking backwards. She was looking backwards and kind of bemoaning the fate of her ancestors. And so the young blood kind of took over while she was gone. Um, that's what's going on with Giraffe. She's back now, not too happy that she <laughs> lost her opportunity to fulfill her man of Giraffe destiny last term. But, um... She's she's gonna try and make the best of it. Next, I finally got figures for Runt and Flush. Um, I just want to talk about so Flush. He said he he says he's an opinionated swine. So I was tempted to go with this trio of pigs. Um, one of the things I gotta look for when I pick pick their their guys is things that will fit them, of course. Um, but also I need to make sure I have three in the unlikely eventuality that they get all their cubes in play. Um, it's useful to to have uh, icons for all of them. And actually, you know, as the game goes on, I might end up having the each just not using cubes at all and just using the figures so that, um, I don't know, there could be some sort of decision-making process based on what what the composition is of uh, pieces or uh, uh, figures within a, a given track. So. Um, that might be kind of interesting, but that's something to play with later. Um, so anyway, I, I had the uh, the opinionated swine. He described himself, or he just he was described as. So I almost went with the pigs. I thought these um, these tennis playing aliens. I think one of them's playing baseball. Um, but yeah, I have like two tennis playing aliens and one baseball playing alien. I thought those fit. He says he's got a large head. He kind of. Uh, portrayed himself as sort of this conceited kind of um, aristocratic sort. I don't think he's actually of royal blood, but he could be. Um, and so we have these little aliens for flesh. Runt was much trickier. Um, for a while I was thinking I was going to go with little bears. I thought little bears might work for Runt, but instead I went f with, I also went, I was going to go with little dogs, but in the end I went with these little wrestling guys. Um, I think they were called muscle men. Back in the day, when they came out, they were I think a Japanese import of the '80s. Um, but yeah, they're they they they're, they're these tiny little strong guys. Uh, I know runts are supposed to be weak, but I, I, th I always think of them as kind of scrappy too. So that that's going to be and that that guy, this guy's face kind of looks a little bit like her, a little bit, not really. Um, so so. That's going to be the, the runt person. Um, you also might notice from the board I updated, I put the towns on there. I, uh, those of you not following along in the forum are missing out on a lot. I'm, I'm really just kind of focusing on my perspective and not talking a lot about the other people. Um, but they're naming their towns and they have their own dramas going on uh, that, that are also fascinating. I, I almost marked the ruins here of New Aberdeen, or New Ookerdeen, but I decided not to because if I mark the ruins of all the towns on the board, it's just going to get too full. Um, but that's that's the town that um, Wolf Corbett lost. And then there was a there's a town over here that got lost, but it never really had a name, so it was, it's harder to... I guess the nameless town. Um, but, oh, this should actually say Uka. I forgot. Um, he wanted a name at Roma, but he, like us, is in the, um, uh, doesn't know what, can't name things yet, so it's just supposed to be Uka, but I, I just put Roma, I forgot, I was going to have it double-sided. Oh well. Um, got a camel here, this is the only camel figure I had in my possession, it's too large, but 
there you go. He's a he's a large large player. This possessive man. He's taken taken over pretty much all of Asia, fringing on Funky Town. There has a really sweet looking demography. He's definitely playing to win. He's he's playing a little differently than everyone else. I think. Um, he's uh, yeah. I'm not sure. From from what he's typed, uh, the the guy Jesse who was taken over for him. As someone he's played with frequently, who's I guess ge geographically um, located near near him, so he has like a gaming group that he plays this game with. So they must must get some uh, competitive juices flowing. I always play this game more experientially, um, but that's just maybe partially because well, partially that's kind of where I folk where I um, drift, but also um, because I don't really have anyone to play competitively, and. You know, here we are. In this case, I'm still not really playing competitively. There's a there's a lot of moves I would not do if I was actually trying to succeed, um, just because it's the wiles of these real people cards. Let's see. Is there anything else to go over? Um, it's about our turn. Got a, got some interesting choices to make. There's a there's a maritime card here. We could certainly take and bring up our maritime track. What w could we do with that? It wouldn't open up a lot. Um, I mean, the main thing we, we would want to get out of maritime, boosting our maritime is getting over the New World. It's also necessary to get an Era 3, um, or Era 4, I guess, yeah. To get out at, at of Era 3. Well, let's see, we need Era... I should just look at the card here. So this is very jabbery. Um, yeah, 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 to get out of Era 3 to Era 4, we'll need our maritime at 2, but... Uh, there should be other opportunities to do that. The, anyway, there's going to be some people looking at that. Um, there's also the, the the kind of our our rather poor demography here. Um, you know, we we could be going for some fecundity decreasage. Fortunately, again, that would be the only card for that. Um, which royal mummies? I don't know. Um, and then there's also the matter of uh, the mana giraffe destiny. So those are some things that we're going to be thinking about going into our next turn. But we got to wait for this fellow here, USR local, who has this funky alien. Thought about having him be in Funky Town, but he's going to be right over here. Um, he's kind of taking the spotlight from our wolf wolf in the back. Um, he's got some population actions to do, and then we are going to go. All right, there has been a large change in our available options. This uh, Adelatl or Archery uh, card is the only card, I believe, in Era 2 that brings the Metallurgy up to 2. So that means that outside of this card, the only way to bring it up to 2 is by um, domesticating a cavalry, cavalry animal, which we have a horse up here. Um, USR Local played that to move his Metallurgy up to 1, and then he moved up to this horse space, so I'm wondering if he isn't going to do that, if we're not going to have a race to domesticate the horse. Um, what that means for us, however, is if we don't want to start getting slaughtered by our neighbors, we need to take this card um, as soon as possible, and since it's our turn, we'll take it right now. Now the question then is, do we want to play it? Um, if we play it now, someone else can just take it and everyone's going to be up to two. Which is not a bad thing, really, but it does put us at par with everyone else, um, which is a disadvantage because we're not doing as well as a lot of people. Well, we're about we're about middling, I would say. Um, so, I, it, given the given the group we have, um, this is another area where Runt and Flush can agree to to keep the card. Giraffe. She's kind of doesn't really care that much about this issue. Um, they were they were able to get, to convince her or to overrule her slightly, um, not to go for the manager after destiny. You know, they convinced her of the necessity of taking that card, um, and she's she's going to remain agnostic about playing it. So, the the flush runt connection has deigned that we keep the card. Now it's now it remains to do. Uh, Chaos roll, so we could go into chaos and then we'll come back with uh, population actions. Okay, we had a nice comfortable roll of six, so we're not going to be going into chaos. Now we have to decide what we want to do with our population actions. Um, we, we're in an interesting position right now. If we had played this card, we could have gone on a massacre rampage, which wouldn't have been good, I don't think, and I don't think anyone wants that. Um, 
but we are in a position where we have some ground to spread into. The only bad thing about that is that is going to cause it, you know, make it give us the potential for chaos later on. Um, so we have two population actions. How do we want to use them? Do we want to spread? Do we want to just move around a bit? Uh, let's talk about that. Flesh did not want to do any sort of population increase at all, partially because um, he he wanted to take the more conservative approach and not risk chaos, but also because he doesn't want to bring another voice into the conversation. He feels like as long as there's three uh, people involved, he can have more of a say in what goes on. The more people, the smaller, the, the less of a voice he has. He was able to reach a kind of comp compromise with Runt and Giraffe, um, and they agreed on allowing just one population increase. And so that's going to go down to um, the south, presumably, uh, into Africa. Uh, but we don't know. This is going to be our last character draw of the game. So this will be the final um, cultural entity that's going to join our group. Unless something weird happens and someone's just no longer with us. Um, so this will be the, the final of the eight um, cultural personas that is going to be playing in this rather long game. Um, so this is kind of exciting. One thing I should say, oh, I just dumped cards everywhere. Well, I picked them up, I should say, um, that my deck is too large, and also that um, it's, I'm really enjoying having this, this game go on at the pace that it goes on. It makes, uh, you know, given that the turns uh, have, are, represent such a long span of time, I think you, it's it's almost an ideal way, at least to, to play this early part of the game, to have this, um, this amount of time between turns where you can kind of mull it over and really kind of feel the, this, this kind of slow sweep of proto-human history. Um, so here we go, last one. Oh, this guy is pleased. His name is Melky. Uh, with an E, M-E-L-K-I-E. -E. He's a psychologist. That's good. We need one of those. We have two teachers, um, I believe. Maybe more. I can't even remember. Um, uh, his secret fantasy is to bike with Greg LeMond, run with Madonna, and swim with the dolphin. Okay, well, I think I have some dolphin figures for Milky. And Milky sounds like Silky to me, which I think is like a mythological sea creature. Uh, an unusual fact about Milky is he's the smallest person he knows. All right. Um, his pet peeve is people who drive with headphones on. I can understand that. I have a hard time sometimes with pedestrians with headphones on because, like, sometimes you need to pass them um, and you can't really communicate with them. Or a, a, a driving pet peeve. And here's another pet peeve with drivers. A lot of people have pet, driving pet peeves. I talk about this. Is people who have tinted windows. Um, as a pedestrian, you need to be able to see that the the driver is paying attention to you. You know that you, there's a lot of, there, there's a lot more that in, that is involved with eye contact, um, because you know because if you're not on wheels, drivers may not notice you, um, and it's hard to tell if they notice you or not if you can't catch their you know you can't see if they're they you can't see their face. Um, they're just a they're even more just a vehicle. Um, he'd like to meet Daniel Boone. His personal motto is, I never give up. Yes. He's most proud of finishing the Ironman Triathlon. Wow. Reputation in high school is Mr. Straight. And three words that describe him are goal-directed, self-confident, and competitive. That's good. We need some competitive blood in our group. Um, I can't see any reason why he would not want to go to Africa, though. Uh, so I think he will. And probably the space with virtual zebra where we started. He's going to go back to where we started.